Hi, this is Miranda from KTPU coming to you live from San Diego State University. We're here to find out just how many people are interested in doing laser beautification treatments and if they really know what they're all about. Either of you ever gotten a photo facial? No. Mm -mm. Okay, how about laser hair removal or laser vein removal? No. No? No. How about Botox? No. No? Would you, either of you be interested in ever getting any of Absolutely. these? Absolutely. Every bit of it. Which all three are all, all for? All three. Okay. And um, do you know Sign how any up. of these work? Yes, I do. Okay, how, which ones do you know about? I know how laser hair removal works. Okay, can you explain that to us? I certainly can. Okay. Um, it works best on light skin with dark hair because the lasers are attracted to the dark hair and they destroy the hair at the root and that's how it works. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Have you ever gotten a photo facial? No. How about laser hair removal or laser vein, vein removal? No. How about Botox? No. Okay, would you be interested in getting any of these? Have you thought about it? Okay, do you know what how any of these work? Yes. Yes, which one? Well, Botox. Okay, and can you explain quickly how that works? Um, I, I believe it's just like the shots, like it just reduces wrinkles, right? It's right. Like okay. Some type, of, uh, some type of weird animal. <laughs> I forget what it is. Yeah. But, I don't know. That, that's about it. Okay, yeah. alright, thanks a lot. Okay, um, have you ever gotten a photo facial? Uh, no. Um, how about laser hair removal or laser vein? Yes. Yes? Which one? Both. Both? Okay, awesome. We are here at New Image Med Spa in Newport to answer these questions concerning facial cosmetology and body cosmetology using lasers and Botox. Not only at Med Spa can you receive such treatments as photofacials, laser hair removal, laser vein removal, and Botox, but you can also meet with a physician's assistant to get um, care and treatment for specific skin types and um, skin regimens. The experience here is absolutely wonderful. Now we're going to take you in to look at a couple examples of what exactly laser treatment cosmetology entails. I'm here with Heather Freiler, a certified physician's assistant here at the New Image Med Spa. So Heather, can you please tell us a little bit about what a photofacial is exactly? Well, a photofacial, as you well know, is also known as intense pulse light, IPL. Uh, what it does is it uses a light source that's attractive to any kind of pigmentation in your skin, as well as any broken blood vessels, also known as telangiectasia. So basically, how the, in simple terms, how the light works is it targets the melanocytes in the skin, which are the little cells that cause pigmentation. So the light's attracted to that, it pulls that pigment up to the surface, and over about a three to seven day period, you're gonna get almost like a coffee ground appearance on the skin, and those freckles will flake off, and you'll have much more even skin tone. As far as for any facial redness, for people who have broken blood vessels, or rosacea, it actually is going to target the redness in the skin or the little hemoglobin in the blood vessel. It heats up that hemoglobin, kind of collapses the vessel down, and then over time your body comes in and clears down that broken down blood and gives you much more even skin tone. Some of the other benefits of using the light, the wavelength can cause actually collagen stimulation, so it can help with fine lines, mm -hmm. also it can help minimize uh, pore size. So lots of benefits to the intense pulse light. So what is the pulse light? Um, is there a certain wavelength that it's set at? Or? There's different wavelengths depending on what we're trying to target. Mm -hmm. um, if we're trying to target the melanocytes, the pigmentation in the skin, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter wavelength so that we can actually target those cells. And for the vessel, it's going to be a little bit of a deeper wavelength to target the, the blood in the blood vessels. So it just depends on what we're trying to do and what the person's, um, their goal is and what they want to treat. So, so for someone like me, what would you suggest? I would definitely use a combination of uh, different parameters on your skin. You have both redness, which is superficial capillaries, mm -hmm. as well as some pigmentation, some freckling. So you would be an excellent candidate for the intense pulse line. Okay. Um, typically we use a topical numbing cream that sits for about 15 minutes prior to the procedure. Uh, with Kim, uh, she's very tough and <laughs> she's going to be just fine. <laughs> Not to mention she's my cousin, so I can do that to her. Okay. So here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Whoa. Are you okay? Uh -huh. All right. Let's do it again. One, two, three. And I'm just. Now tell me, Kim, what was the experience like? <laughs> um, I would definitely suggest you get the numbing cream <laughs> when you do it. But um, it feels like a little rubber band hitting you, and it's a definitely a big flashlight, and you can feel the heat. Um, 
but I've, I'm told that it's worth it. So I guess the whole beauty is pain kind of a thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I can definitely tell that light is definitely a wave and a particle because I felt the particles hitting my face. <laughs> So it's not going to target the blonde hair, but any dark hair it should target. So what we're going to do, it's going to pulse. And it does hurt a little bit, sorry. Normally we'll do a topical numbing cream. <laughs> However, Kim Oh, sucks. you can smell that. Yeah, you can smell a little burning <laughs> hair. Um, okay, so now that we've explored um, photo facials and laser hair removal, we're now going to talk a little bit about Botox. So now many people may not think that Botox has a physics component to it, but Heather's actually going to explain to us a little bit exactly how Botox works. Okay, well there's actually quite a bit of more of a human physiology um, background to it, but there is a little bit of physics involving the nerves. So what we'll talk about is a, just a brief uh, description of how Botox actually works in a patient. Um, Botox is basically a purified protein, and when it's injected into the muscle, it's going to bind to the neuromuscular junction. So once it binds to the receptors, it's basically not going to allow the nerve impulse to reach the muscle to allow it to contract. So by doing that, it tightens the surface of the skin and works very quickly and effectively in um, getting rid of static and dynamic rightids, which are also known as wrinkles. Um, Damaris is here with us, and she's going to tell us a little bit about laser and laser hair removal along with um, laser pigmentation removal. Well, laser works. Um, it's usually concentrated in a tube here, and inside the tube you have photons and some kind of gas, he um, helium or something. Uh, the photons excite the, the gas, and when the gas relaxes, it, it um, releases more photons. Those photons then bounce across between these mirrors, and concentrate an emission. So laser actually stands for light amplification of, by the stimulated emission of radiation. So um, the photons are then amplified and concentrated and emitted in a laser form. So it's actually, you have um, a laser which is one color usually, and um, then what happens is that the laser um, attacks what's called the chromophore chromophore, and that's usually melanin, hemoglobin, or even carbon. It's usually the darkest part of um, the skin. In this, in this um, particular example, it's the hair follicles, the darkest part. So here we have a hair follicle, and here's the hair. And the laser actually is attracted to this hair follicle, and when it hits the hair follicle, it heats up so as to burn that hair follicle so it's, it dies. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about how um, lasers are related to um, intense pulse light. Now, intense pulse light is not actually a laser. Mm -hmm. It uses the full spectrum of um, light, but it does focus on certain areas so that you get a specific wavelength and a specific frequency, just like the laser does. Intense um, pulse light can also be used um, on different skin types where laser cannot. For the hair, it works the same way. It shoots the light down the shaft where it's attracted by the um, bulb, which contains the most melanin in the, that. And then at that point, the energy is transformed to heat, just like lasers mm -hmm. are. Um, same thing works with pigmentation. However, the neat thing about intense pulse light is that um, it can work with um, people who have darker pigmentation 
Whereas lasers yeah. really don't work. With lasers, it only really works on people with pale skin that have darker hair follicles. Now we'll take a quick look at Kim's face just one day after she's had the treatment. You'll notice that she has more freckles because the body is actually it's trying to get expelling um, the pigmentation that was affected. It's eventually going to flake off almost looking like coffee grounds. Pretty gross, huh? So now we have Kim 24 hours after the procedure and she doesn't look as scary anymore. <laughs> Her well. face is actually <laughs> healing very well, and if you can zoom in here in these areas, we can see where the hair follicles are actually burned. You can see these little spots here, and the skin, the body's um, expelling this through the skin, so these will start uh, flaking off. They won't stay like this. And now that we've taken a look at Kim's face, we're going to talk about a different procedure that we um, didn't actually demonstrate, but we did discuss. Botox. Kim's going to get a little more deeper into the science behind it and what exactly entails so that if someday, hopefully not now, but when you're much older and you really have to worry about wrinkles, if you're thinking about doing Botox, you'll know exactly what you're doing to your body. Um, in a normal axon, what happens is we have our action potential that fires along the axon. There's the myelin sheath that cause it to jump so it moves quickly and it reaches the end and we have the neurotransmitters that are um, actually secreted. Then we have like a muscle or a cell near there that has the receptor for these neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters will kind of do a lock and key method. So much for joining us with this little project today. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it and you've learned something. Yeah, and hopefully you don't try any of this at home and now you're more educated on exactly what's going into and what's happening to your body when you get these cosmetic procedures done. And remember, always have a licensed professional do it. And um, until next time, thank you. We are Skunks in the Box.